everybody today's video I decided to take it back a little bit and we're going to focus on what's called paper piecing um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this dear Lizzie paper pad is the documentary uh, this is a pad that I got from um, the boutique uh, a while ago I just haven't used it yet so what we're gonna do first is use this um, Prima stamp here I'm just laying it in the misty to figure out you know where I want to use it and I'm gonna ink it up with the archival black ink because this is I'm gonna do some um, water coloring on this so I'm stamping on to a watercolor sheet and I always like to use the misty so that way I can stamp it twice so that way you get a nice crisp black line now right here I had an issue because I had a little bit of hairs um, I think it was from when I was cleaning the stamp so I just needed to get those out of the way and then I'm stamping down focal piece done set that aside and now we're gonna lay down the actual pattern paper and all I'm doing is inking up from the dress up and then inking it down and then what I'm gonna do here and show you up close you can see the pattern and what I want to get now is the shoes but what I realized was that little piece that was hanging off on the end was in my way so I just trimmed that off laid it back down and then pressed down to ink uh, for the shoe pattern all right and then once we got everything done there I decided to start on my skin tone I always use the flesh uh, tone first in these uh, zig markers that I use because I like to lay that color down and then I go back in with a darker color for my shadows and I'm just laying it all down nice and easy just a color and you can technically just leave it there you know you doesn't have to be anything masterful and super special blending just as long as you put some color down okay and then what I'm doing here though is I'm showing you that you can add shadows um, with a slightly darker uh, marker I'm using the original flesh tone and I want to say it was oatmeal yep oatmeal to create this um, a darker shadow and tones in her skin all right and then once we do the face we're I'm done with that and if you get any ink on it I was just showing you just rub your marker and it'll come right off next we're gonna do the hair now basically what I'm doing is getting down everything that's going to require any type of markering because the last thing I'm going to do is going to be adding our paper pieces to the actual project to uh, you know finish it off. So I'm just laying down a dark color leaving some spots and then using my base color to blend it in. just getting the bangs and then that's it for the hair all right so on this paper you see it's mostly like the grays or some reds and some um, greens I really like this um, pattern paper but for her top of her bodice I was like to keep things simple I'm just gonna go ahead and color that in in black solid black and let that be it and then the ruffle on the bottom of the skirt I'm gonna color that in black as well and then I also went down to the shoes and I did the bows that were hanging off the back okay and then the last little bit of markering on this part is going to be the flooring. Now, right here, had I been thinking in hindsight and all that good stuff, I probably would have done my blue outline that I'm going to do later on in the video now. But we'll talk about that later. So right now I got my 10 Holt scissors and I'm just following the lines of the stamps and I'm gonna cut out the pieces for the shoes now some of these pieces are going to be super tiny so when you're doing your paper piecing you just want to make sure you keep all your pieces 
separate from anything that you know you might be throwing away you don't want to throw away a piece that you actually uh, actually need so I'm cutting now on the second shoe the front of where the toes are and the heel I decided I wanted the paper piece to heel as well so those three pieces are there and now I'm going in for the bigger piece which is uh, the skirt which is super easy. I try not to get too intricate intricate with the um, pieces that I'm going to paper piece because it can be very tedious, you know, trying to cut certain things out. So I like this one because, you know, the pieces are pretty big except for the shoe. Sometimes I do the shoe, sometimes I don't. This time I just wanted you to, to see what the possibilities are. So right now I'm cutting out the two sides of the sweater. And the one thing on this one, I did have a little bit of trouble on the one side because the ink wound up stamping in one of the dark, like the blackish gray section. So I couldn't see where my ink was. So I bare, I just, you know, kind of made it work so that way it wouldn't look too crazy. And you're going to see once I cut it out here, I line it up just to make sure it's going to look okay. And then the last piece is going to be actually the headband. Now, if you're very particular about what colors you want, you can uh, stamp it all over whatever that sheet of paper is you're using until you get the pieces in the right spot. Now, here's a good tip. When it comes to paper piecing, after you cut it out, a good tip is to take a black tip marker and go around all the edges. Now, what does this do, you might ask? This is going to make it look like you cut it out correctly. <laughs> so if you had any wonky cuts, it's going to make it look like everything was done precise and everything is nice and neat. So I highly suggest it for all pieces that you're cutting out, okay? And it just gives it a nice edge once you have it laid down on the paper. So I'm just trying to get these little teeny tiny pieces. And these three right here, I'm like, I'm going to do those off camera because they're just too tiny to try and fit within the area. So I got a Zig 2A glue pen. And I'm putting the glue down in the shoe and placing the paper piece on there. And then I realized I should probably zoom in. So we're going to zoom in here. And I'm going to put down some of the glue. Now glue pens are definitely a plus when you're doing stuff like this especially when you have small teeny tiny pieces um, so that way you can try and it's easier to control the glue now on this one um, as it was coming out I realized I need to put some more down and I probably put too much down because I'm gonna wind up having to get a tissue to get all of the glue that is oozing out on that right side um, of the skirt so you're gonna see me dab in here and I just I'm trying to be careful because um, the zig markers are reactivated by water and glue will reactivate it so there was some ink and stuff on the tissue because it reactivated and upon doing that there was a little smudge over on the right hand side that's why I had to do a blue outline so <laughs> I'm just adding down the pieces to keep going all the way up to the headband. The process is the same, You're just laying down the glue and then putting your piece on top. And then once I get everything on, I'm going to zoom back out a little because what I like to do, um, which I learned from, I want to say it was um, Amy R on uh, Prairie Paper and Ink, I believe is her channel but what I learned from her is that when you do paper piecing that it's important to marker either a gray line or I use the same pens that I was using for my watercoloring um, to give the paper a little bit of dimension so because I had the little smudge I'm just adding a blue line uh, like a halo all around her and this does take a little bit of time but thankfully with the zig markers you can blend out really quick you know really 
well so that way you don't have like harsh lines or anything so if you don't have the zig markers this would work with your Tim Holtz markers the distress markers um, you could also do it with the oil pastels from Prima and if you have the aqua markers from Spectrum Noir it would work with that too you want anything that's gonna basically move with the water and blend out and don't ever fear if you put some down and it looks like the harsh line is still there what I usually do is put some more down or um, take the tip of my water brush to the actual um, marker and then blend out the water that way and that'll help give you a little bit more of a smooth um, blend and if you notice the blue it just makes the actual um, stamped image kind of pop you know and it helped cover up my little smudge and it gave a nice little detail to the actual uh, drawing that we have here the stamp image that we have here and I'm just finishing up and adding the blue okay and there you have it there's our project now I have went off camera and created the card and here you can see I added sequins um, and a nice sentiment down at the bottom that just says thinking of you it can be happy birthday um, these Prima ones since they don't really come with sentiments you, you're open to put whatever you want there and this one was fun and you get a nice detail and look from just using pattern paper which we all have tons of okay you guys so thank you for joining me I know I took it a little back but I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in our next video